Good morning. <coughs> so we are looking at more of David's life, um, but we've come to 1 Samuel 25, and the first verse here has made me divert my thinking this morning to Samuel. Um, and it says, Now Samuel died, and all Israel assembled and mourned for him, and they buried him in his house at Ramah. Now, Samuel, we haven't really talked about Samuel. Samuel was the last great uh, judge of Israel. And uh, he bridges the gap between the book of Judges and uh, the period of the kings, because he is the one who anoints the first king, Saul. And the story of how he came, uh, came to be born is in the first couple of chapters of First Samuel. Um, and you may know the story. If you don't know the story, do read the first uh, couple of chapters of um, Samuel. Uh, because Samuel was the product of um, a very uh, uh, a very passionate plea from his mother, Hannah, for a baby. Um, and Hannah and her husband, Elkanah, they lived in Ramah. Um, it says that in 1 Samuel 1, verse 19. And they, went, they used to go up to the temple of the Lord, every or to the tent, to the place of worship for the Lord. Um, they used to go up every year. And uh, her rival wife, the, the second wife of Elkanah, um, had children and she didn't and she was teased and belittled as a result and she, and one day she pleads uh, and Eli the the priest at the time hears her crying and, uh, and and says the Lord grant that you have a child and she said I will lend him to the Lord as long as he lives he will be lent to the Lord <clears throat> and I always thought that meant that once the child was was weaned and uh, <coughs> taken <coughs> <coughs> taken to Eli um, at Shiloh, uh, that he never went home and that she lost him forever. She only ever saw him once a year when she brought him new clothing. But um, it does say in chapter 7, uh, when Samuel had grown up and was... Uh, in Eli's place as judge over Israel, he said, Samuel, it says here in um, uh, 1 Samuel seven fifteen, Samuel judged Israel all the days of his life. And he went on a circuit year by year to Bethel, Gilgal and Mizpah. And he judged Israel in all these places. Then he would come back to Ramah for his home was there. And there also he administered justice to Israel and he built there an altar to the Lord. <coughs> so, he was an itinerant judge um, and uh, sort of um, magistrate, I suppose, and we might call it. But he had as his home base Rama, which is where his parents lived. And therefore, although Hannah promised Samuel to the Lord, and indeed Samuel served the Lord all his life, he based his adult ministry in Rama. So he lived where his, pet, where his family lived. And this first verse in 1 Samuel 25, Now Samuel died, and all Israel assembled and mourned for him, and they buried him in his house at Ramah. And I find that a wonderful thing, you know, that sometimes um, we make promises that perhaps when we think about them in hindsight are a bit rash. You know, she promised this child to the Lord. She had no certainty she'd have any other children. She did have some more children, but there was no certainty of that. She'd been barren and not been able to conceive. But she promised this first child to the Lord. And there was no guarantee that she would ever see him uh, except once a year when she went up, as when he was growing up. But in fact, he made his home in his base in the town where his family lived. So 
there's a sense in which the Lord gave Samuel back to his family. You know, and I think this is something to think about. Samuel was a great man. Um, he doesn't really get acclaimed as much as he should be because the focus is on Saul and David and all those events and Jonathan that, that are recorded in the books of Samuel. But there's not a mistake that the two books of Samuel are called Samuel because Samuel was an important figure. So I'll leave you with that thought for the day and God bless you. Bye bye.